Hi folks, today I've got a video talking about our second grammar rule, um, the idea of introductions and commas, how commas separate introductions from the main clauses of sentences. So introductory commas are exactly what it sounds, just a comma that separates an introduction from an independent clause. So it's going to be really critical that we're able to identify independent clauses um, for this rule and for future rules. Definitely makes it easier when you can see those pieces and parts. Um, but introductions can be single words like yet, or they can be phrases like this prepositional phrase here, like on the other hand, um, or it could even be a full dependent clause. So while the class was sleeping, uh, my main clause is Mr. Restad ate all their lunches. That's my independent, right? It could stand on itself. But this clause, while the class was sleeping, that couldn't stand on its own, right? That could not be its own independent thought. And so let's review um, what our types of clauses are. So independent clause, the check is, is if I take this section out of my um, sentence and try to have it stand alone as an independent thought, full sentence on, on its own, does it work? So I like turtles. It works. It can stand on its own. Dependent clause, on the other hand, um, has a subject and a verb, but can't stand on its own as a complete thought. So when I see turtles, well, that kind of begs the question. This clause is dependent on something else. Like, what do you do when I see turtles? Well, I get really excited. Uh, but this would be a D dependent clause. Um, and the piece and parts to recognize of this, subject and verb, and then I have this idea of a subordinating conjunction. So while coordinating conjunctions join things together, those fanboys like for, and, nor, but, so uh, subordinating conjunctions say this part of the sentence is dependent. It needs something else. Cannot be um, a, lo a, s a lone thought. Um, and this kind of amplifies the types of sentences that we can create. Now, we've got a simple sentence, which just has a single subject and a verb, like Mr. Restad drank coffee. It's easy. Mr. Restad, subject, drank, verb. We've got our compound sentences, which are two um, independent clauses, so two subjects and two verbs connected by that comma and that conjunction. And now I've got this third type of sentence called a complex sentence, where I can join a dependent clause to an independent clause, or, or vice versa, right? Um, and just the comma rule here is to note when the dependent clause or really anything comes before that independent clause, separate it with a comma. Because um, readers deserve that clarity that say, I should get a little bit of an indication before your main sentence starts. And in this case, my main sentence is the student slept in. Um, now, I wanted to add this information that while well, Mr. Rest had drank coffee, this happened. But the student slept in, that's my main independent clause. Um, all right, gets even a little bit more complicated because I can have compound and complex sentences in the same time. And that just means I have two independent clauses. That's what makes it compound. Like a compound word is two words stuck together. A compound sentence is two sentences stuck together. And what makes it complex is this idea of a dependent clause. So the students fell asleep. Independent can stand on its own. While Mr. Restad excitedly talked about grammar, that doesn't, doesn't, can't stand on its own, right? So that's a dependent clause. And the rest of the school played dodgeball, right? The rest of the school played dodgeball is an independent clause. So I have two independents, one dependent. And you can see how these get really, really, really big um, as people's sentences get more and more and more complex, um, which is a great thing. You're able to talk about a lot more information, string it together gram in a grammatically correct way to have people connect these ideas. Instead of having a bunch of short, choppy sentences, you can create long, flowing sentences that really read, drag your readers um, through your thought process. Uh, the general rule is you're never going to have um, more than two independent clauses in a sentence. Anything more than that usually is what we consider a run on. All right, so just as a quick review, um, coordinate conjunctions, those, those fanboys, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so, brings ideas together. Um, and then subordinating conjunctions, here's just a few examples. If, while, since, when, unless, after, until, because, um, anything that makes something dependent on something else, uh, they're going to serve to introduce a dependent clause. And so those are our kind of our signal markers uh, for dependent clauses. And here's some formulas to help you. So if I was a, a note-taking person, which I am, I would write these down. So when a dependent clause comes before an independent clause, 
we need a comma separating those two because the dependent clause is acting as an introduction. If it's an independent clause, then dependent clause, no comma. Just, just keep on writing because I've already given you the main part of my sentence and then I have this auxiliary information. But since you got this first, there's no need to separate. Um, if I have two independent clauses, I need a comma and a conjunction. And then I can mix those together in any way I see fit. You know, dependent, independent, comma, conjunction, independent, dependent, right? This is just a big old long complex sentence that I've strung together uh, with different types of clauses. So again, our checks for these first two comma rules is number one, if you see a fanboy, um, like and or 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 so, you need to check, is this a full sentence in front of it? And is this a full sentence after it? If so, you need a comma and a conjunction. Um, and then if you see a signal word like if, while, since, when, unless, after, because, one of those subordinating conjunctions, then you need to make a decision. Like, is this dependent clause coming at the beginning of a sentence and acting as an introduction? If so, I'm going to need a comma somewhere. If not, it's still a dependent clause making this a complex sentence, but if it's coming after my independent clause, I'm okay. No commas needed. So let's check out what John Sena has for us today. Uh, he's asking us where the comma go. What kind of sentence do we have? So take a quick pause. See if you can figure that out. Where are these commas going? All right. So if I hear about commas one more time, I might go into a coma. I think that's one of my better sentences. Uh, right off the bat, I see this word if, which is a subordinated conjunction. So I know I'm dealing with a dependent clause. And because I know I'm dealing with a dependent clause, that means it has to be linked to an independent clause. So at the very least, this is a complex sentence because I have dependent and independent. So if I hear about the commas one more time, I might go into a coma. I think that I might go into a coma. That's my independent clause. Let's do it this way. That's my independent clause. So let's make that that. And that means this right here is our dependent clause and I need a comma. If I hear about commas one more time, comma, I might go into a comma. And the next one, snow is great because it makes the world look pretty. Um, I see that word because, because it makes the world look pretty, there is my dependent clause, but it's coming after my independent clause. So both of these are complex sentences, but only this one needs a comma because this dependent clause is acting like an introduction. I could move this one back here. Like that. Because it makes the world look pretty, snow is great. That actually works as long as I put that comma there to um, put it in front of my dependent clause. And of course, shrink that down. Uh, you actually can start a sentence with because. Uh, so you can prove your fifth grade teacher's wrong or whoever it was who told you that. Um, so long as it's in a full dependent clause attached to an independent clause. Now, a lot of times when we first learn about writing sentences, we have no idea what dependent and independent clauses are. So that's kind of why that rule comes up. All right. So to wrap up, here are the things that I want you to know. Uh, you need to be able to recognize introductions, basically anything that's coming before an independent clause. I need you to know what an independent clause is made of. I want you to be able to recognize some of those subordinated conjunctions. And then we added a new sentence type. Um, what is a complex sentence? Make sure you have those things in your notes. Make sure you can explain them, use them, recognize them. Um, and for posterity's sake, here's a longer list of subordinating conjunctions. Um, there's even more than this. Um, they're not as simple as fanboys. But uh, usually you can recognize them when we see them because they mean something is dependent on something else. All right. Good luck, folks.